Hello friends, my name is Chirag and I welcome you on this channel. During an event of earthquake, many different type of building failures were observed in the past. So it is very much important to understand building failure patterns and reasons of that to reduce the building failure ratio by improving it against future seismic events. In this video, I am going to discuss one of the building failure effect which is known as seismic pounding effect and by viewing this video you will understand what is pounding effect reasons of occurrence and types of it remedial measures to avoid it and also fail some capturing of past failures so let's learn something Among the possible structural damages, seismic induced pounding is one of the main causes of severe building damages and commonly observed in several past earthquakes. Also damages of non-structural elements involves effect of pounding or movement across separation joints between adjacent structures. The seismic pounding is simply defined as collision of buildings constructed in closely proximity with each other. The principal reason for the seismic pounding is insufficient separation in between the adjacent buildings. It may also be the result of a combination of many other factors such as different dynamic characteristics of adjacent structures, the unexpected severity of the ground motion, non-compliance with codal provisions, particularly for lateral and torsional stiffness due to inadequate building configuration and structural framing system, and cumulative tilting due to foundation movement. This phenomenon is mostly observed in the old buildings that were constructed before the advent and popularity of earthquake resistant design principles. Generally, two types of pounding damage can occur. One is local damage at the point of impact. Second is global damage resulting from the energy and momentum transfer caused by collision. Local damage is caused by the collision force while global damage depends on the dynamic properties of both buildings at the time of collision. This type of damage arises when buildings are built without separation right up to property lines and order to make maximum use of the space. When floor of uh, these buildings generally are constructed of the same height, damage due to pounding usually not that much serious. But if this is not the case, then there are two problems. When the floors of adjacent buildings are at different elevations, the floor of each structure can act like ramps battering the columns of the other building when one of the building is higher than the other the lower building can act as a base of the upper part of the higher building the lower building receives an unexpected large amount of lateral load while the higher building suffers from a major stiffness discontinuity at the level of the top of the lower building A separation joint or a seismic gap is the distance between two different building structures, often two wings of the same facility that allows the structure to move independently on the one another. Although many current codes specify a minimum seismic gap, but it is still inadequate and codes necessarily lag behind the current research and fail to include the effect of other parameters that affect the structural deformation. Seismic codes and regulations worldwide specify minimum separation distances to be provided between adjacent buildings to prevent pounding, which is obviously equal to the relative displacement demand of the two potentially colliding structural systems. Past seismic codes did not give definite guidelines to prevent pounding. Due to economic considerations including maximum usage requirements, 
especially in the high density populated areas of cities there are many buildings worldwide which are already built in contact or extremely close to each other that could suffer pounding damage in future earthquakes several example of building damage have been observed due to pounding in past earthquakes The most simplest and effective way for ponding mitigation and reducing damage due to ponding is to provide enough separation. But it is sometimes difficult to be implemented due to high cost of land. An alternative to the seismic separation gap provision is the structural design that is minimize the effect of ponding by decreasing lateral motion, drift control and aligning floors in adjacent buildings. With this, hope you understand pounding effect in building during an earthquake. If you have a question, feel free and discuss through comment box. So stay with this channel for more videos like this.